Are you wondering what is the most nutrition meat of them all? Maybe chicken? Beef? Perhaps turkey? Let's rank them all in the ultimate popular meat tier list from a nutritionist and health bestseller perspective. Now, subscribe to the channel if you like this type of video because there are 16 of them in the pipeline and more to come. Let's now see the rules I will use for this tier list. Now, first of all, each food will count as organic and very high quality. So we're going to assume very low pollution, very low toxins. Another thing important, I will consider the values for 100 grams 3.5 ounces of the meat and we will rank them based on their best cut assuming like uh, steak breasts uh, so the highest quality of that specific meat let's now see what we're going to rank them on first thing i'm going to do their macronutrients these are protein carbs and fat of the specific meat then we're going to create like a sort of like power level proteins to fat ratio the higher the better it will be so if a meat scores higher here, it's going to get a better grade. And finally, we're going to look at the amino acid profile of every single meat. What does it mean? What is an amino acid? So meats are largely made of proteins, okay? And therefore, the building blocks of a protein are called amino acid. Now, if you have a good like um, spread of the amino acid, it's going to be so much better. Some meats are going to be better than other. Some meats are going to be inferior than other. And I will let you know when we go through the tier list. Now, let's define meat. So for the purpose of this video here, I'm going to use the nutritional definition of red and the nutritional definition of white meat. What does it mean? Well, essentially all mammals are going to be considered red meat. These include beef, pork, goat, bison, rabbit, venison, and lamb. And every bird is going to be considered like uh, white meat. So chicken, duck, and turkey. What's the difference? So the darker the meat, the more it's going to contain two things. Something called iron, and which is a very important mineral for the body, but not normal iron. It's going to be heme iron, which is like the highest form and the most bioavailable form of iron. And then the meat, when it's like very, very dark, very, very red, it contains something called myoglobin. This is the protein that gives you very, very high endurance. The more myoglobin you have, the more endurance you will have. And for example, if you were to go and train yourself at high altitude, your myoglobin will improve over time. Now, with that said, let's define what we're going to discuss and what we're going to find in the meats. Now, most meats are going to be protein and fat in various quantity, and most meats are going to be essentially sugar-free. They don't, they don't have any carbohydrates, at least when we select the leanest parts, and especially when we don't select anything which was processed. Now, as a general rule, meats have all of the essential amino acids, so they can be used to make all the proteins in the body. This is why they are considered to be complete proteins, okay? Finally, the call whether to eat meat or not, I will leave that up to you. I will just consider the nutritional values, then that's your call. These are the sources I'm using for the video, and now we are ready to go. Let's see which one is going to reign supreme. Starting with the first contender, which is pork. Now, pork has 259 kilocalories every 100 grams, with high, a high amount of fat, about 17 grams, decently high, but not terrible, you will see, amount of cholesterol every 100 grams, and literally 26 grams of protein every 100, which is fairly good to be meat. Now, the protein to fat ratio is 1.5 to 1, which is going to be the lowest one we're going to see today. But the amino acid profile, the essential amino acid, plus all the regular amino acid in pork, they're all really, really good. Okay, So they're like, we know exactly what kind of amino acid are found in every type of meat, and therefore we can define them in that specific way. So when it comes to pork, where are we going to place it? Well, it's the best source of them all of vitamin B1, which is really important for energy production. It's a very good source of selenium, which is a very important mineral for to protect you from antioxidants. And you can go like on the top right corner and see like the videos on fruit to, to explain to you more about antioxidants. But unfortunately, it's a bit high in fat. It's a bit higher in calories than all of the other one. It does have a very good amino acid profile. I think pork goes into high B tier. Next, we have chicken, and chicken has, you can see, has way less calories than pork. It does have less uh, um, grams of fat, 3.4. It does have both a little bit more cholesterol with 106 milligrams, but it does also have higher levels of protein. What does it mean for our, for our tier list? That it's going to have an 8 0.8 to 1 ratio protein to fat, which is much better than the previous one. It's going to have very good amino acid profile, all the regular ones, very similar to what Paul would say. So the score in that part here of the amino acid is going to be, be clearly a 5 out of 5. So where do we put, where do we put our, 
our chicken. Well, it's one of the best sources of vitamin B6, which is very important to reduce your stress and very important also to sleep. It does have one of the best good protein to fat ratio, and it's an excellent source of an amino acid called leucine. This is one of the branched chain amino acid. If you've ever been to the gym, you probably have heard people taking BCAA or branched chain amino acid, of which one of the most important one, if not the most important one, is leucine. So it can be really, really useful for the muscle. If you be really, really useful if you go to the gym. Where do we put it here? I would say low A tier is the right place. Next we have duck. And duck, they have about 200 kilocalories, so a bit higher. Well, well, nicely uh, higher than uh, than chicken. About 11 grams of fat every 100. Cholesterol, the, the almost the highest one we're going to see. There's going to be another one which is even higher, but 140 milligram is very high. And later, at the end of the video, I will tell you more about cholesterol, so don't worry if you don't know much about it. Protein 25, which is okay, but not great. Now in here, protein to fat ratio, 2.3 to 1. Not terrible, not great either. It does have good um, like spread of amino acid, all the essential amino acid, but there are two amino acids that in um, in duck are not really good. These ones are tryptophan and glycine, and that's a problem because tryptophan is the amino acid that helps your body to make the neurotransmitter known as serotonin, which is also the happy hormone. It's the hormone that also keeps you like really feeling like really really well. So having low levels of tryptophan is not really ideal. And then it does have low levels of glycine. Glycine is the most basic and the smallest of the amino acid, which means that it can be used essentially everywhere. And it's one of the, if not the most useful one. So the score, I cannot give it more than four out of five because low numbers of these very important amino acids, that's not really good. So where do we put it? Well, it does have a ratio of protein to fat, which is not great. It's not bad, but it's not great either. It does have all of the essential amino acids, but fairly low level of tryptophan and glycine. I would say low B tier with a case of high C tier. For now, I'm going to put it in low B tier. Then we have one of the most popular one, which is beef or cow. Now this one here has 185 kilocalories every 100 grams with fat with 6.8, which is midway, it's not bad. Cholesterol lower than chicken, you wouldn't have expected that. But also protein lower than chicken. So what can we put the beef? Beef has a 4.1 to 1 protein to fat ratio, which is fairly good. It does have like good amino acid profile, all the essential amino acid. So the score for beef for its amino acid is certainly like five out of five. Now, what can we say about beef and where do we put it? So it's very decent in protein to fat ratio. So that's gonna give it like a good edge. And uh, it does have very good iron as a mineral and very good zinc. As I told you before, iron is very important for energy production. It's very important for you to be able to function in a beautiful way. So that's very, very important. Zinc is the main amino acid behind your immune system, repairing your skin. So it's a very, very important amino acid. And then and beef has a very good spread of of this amino acid here, it goes directly into low A tier. I think slightly below chicken, but we could make a case to put them on the right level. For now, I'm gonna put it slightly below chicken. Next, we have bison, and it's the first one of our powerhouses. Why? Because bison has 180 kilocalories, only six grams of fat, very low cholesterol, only 79 milligrams, and 29 grams of protein. Now, compare bison to beef. Bison is superior to beef in any way, shape, or form. 4.9 to 1 compared to 4.4 to 1, but that's not the only point. It does have a very good amino acid profile. It does have all of the essential amino acid, but it's really, really good because it contains plenty of sulfur-rich amino acids, which are the amino acids which support your liver. And I'm going to tell you more about that in a second. So with this like good profile here, easily five out of five. Where do we put bison? Well, it, it's better than beef in terms of protein to fat ratio. It does have higher omega-3 than beef and does have higher zinc than beef. So beef was already good in zinc. Bison is even better and it will support your liver with the sulfur-rich amino acid. Why is this important? Because the liver is the part of your body that basically gets rid of toxins, like when you drink, uh, when you smoke, or when you live in a polluted area, it's your liver that needs to protect you. And for your liver to function, it does require sulfur-rich amino acid. So something like bison that really helps with this kind of amino acid needs to go very, very high. So high 
A tier right away, maybe with a case of low S tier. We're gonna see later when we when we continue. Next, we have Turkey, and Turkey is also fairly good. 150 kilocalories, two grams of fat, cholesterol only 80 milligrams, so much better than um, than chicken and protein 30 grams now let's have a look at the protein to fat ratio that's really good 15 to 1 is one of the best ones we're going to see today amino acid profile very good all the essential amino acids and uh, so this is really really solid and one thing about uh, turkey is that it does have the best ratio between two amino acids lysine and arginine why is this important because if you if you are someone who has recurrent uh, cold sore or recurrent um, like intimate herpes or also like shingles, essentially these viruses here are from the herpes family virus. And these viruses here, they come out when the arginine levels in the body of the amino acid arginine become superior to the level of the lysine amino acid, which means that some foods, they make them come out. So if you eat certain foods like nuts, as an example, they really promote the, you to get like a, like a cold sore. Whereas if you eat something like turkey, it makes the opposite way around. So it's really protective of against people with herpes, the people with uh, like shingles and so on and forth. So where do we put this? Well, it's very clear that it's uh, uh, one of the greatest protein to fat ratio. It's the best source of vitamin B3 of them all, of all of the foods we're going to see today. And it does have the best lysine to arginine ratio. So it keeps cold sore and herpes at bay. This is easily a high A tier. Next we have goat and goat as you can see it like here it's very tricky because calories wise is really low it's really low 145.8 early 3 grams of fat and very low cholesterol and very good protein 27.6 so it may seem really really good unfortunately there is a there is a catch in here now if we just go and look at the protein to fat ratio is 9.1 which is really really good it does have all of the essential amino acid but but, and this is a problem, it does really have a low profile of glycine, which is once again the basic amino acid, the one that goes everywhere, cysteine, which is a very important amino acid for your liver, and also very low in tyrosine, which is important to speed up your metabolism. So when you want like good levels of metabolism, like to, to for you so you can eat more and burn more fat, like tyrosine is very important. Uh, why is it important? Because tyrosine and selenium are basically needed from the, a part of your body called thyroid to make the thyroid hormones. So when we put all of that into the picture, we can't really give it, look, like we can't really give it like a really, really high score in the amino acid score. So we're going to put it like a three out of five and no more than that. So where do we put goat? Well, goat is tricky because the values, they seem very solid. It does have a great protein to fat ratio, low calories but it's very low in three of the most important amino acids. So it's too incomplete as a protein. I mean, it's still a complete protein, but it's too incomplete compared to everything else. So high C tier, and um, I think it's, there is no question about this. Next, we have uh, venison or deer. And this is really interesting because we have 150 kilocalories, which is fairly good. Only two grams of fat, but 31 grams of protein. This is really, really good. And cholesterol, 85 milligrams, which is fairly good. Like, uh, not the best, but certainly fairly good. Now, here is when, <laughs> this is very interesting. Protein to fat ratio, 15.5 to 1. The best one that we're going to see today. Amino acid profile, really good. All the essential amino acid, but, but deer or venison is the best for glycine and tryptophan. Why is this important? As I told you before, glycine, basic amino acid, if you have good levels of glycine, they can go everywhere to repair your muscle, make your immune system, make hormones. So they're really, really, really important. And tryptophan, do you remember, is the main amino acid that helps you to make which hormone? Serotonin, which is the happy hormone. So by eating these kind of foods, it can really help to lift your mood and make you feel better. So its score is certainly five out of five with no questions about it. So where do we put it? So it does have the best protein to fat ratio. It does have the best value for glycine, best value for tryptophan. It normally comes in an environment which is less polluted than, than farms or cities. That's also good because there is going to be less free radical damage. This is literally like a solid low S tier and we could even make a case for mid S tier. For now, we're gonna put it in low S tier. We're gonna see by the end if uh, this is going to change. Next on our list is rabbit. 
And Rabbit is very low in calories, 116, and it only has 2.3 grams of fat with only 70, 76 milligrams of cholesterol and 22 grams of protein. And if you look at it like that, it may seem like this is one of the coolest things since sliced bread, but it does have some issues which we're going to um, discuss in a moment. Now, the ratio between protein and fat is really good, 9.7 to 1. So this is again something, oh, oh, rabbit is really, really good. And it is, but you have to understand there is like a like a catch in here. I will tell you in two minutes where what the catch is, okay? Now, amino acid profile, all the essential amino acid, very good amino acid profile. And it does contain very high level of amino acid called threonine. Why is this important? Because it's one of the main amino acids for your sleep so it will support healthy sleep but it will also support healthy mucus production what does it mean like imagine like when you are in a in a room and everybody's sneezing everybody's coughing now before a potential virus can actually reach like the, the your bloodstream where it can become um, like a problem it's going to be trapped in the mucus so during winter time especially it's very important to have good levels of mucus why because the mucus traps like the viruses the bacteria the parasites so when you blow your nose and you throw it in the bin you're going to be protected but when you are in an environment which is too dry like it happens often in in um, in winter when you have the heating on the amount of mucus can go down but having good levels of threonine can counter that so where do we put a rabbit so great protein to fat ratio so it's gonna go into the a tier but let's be very clear now rabbit is one of those foods that even if you have unlimited amount of rabbit you will not be able to survive because you're gonna get something called rabbit poisoning or protein poisoning essentially the proteins in rabbit and the calories in rabbit are not enough for essentially a human being to survive more than a week there is not enough fat there is not enough of the, of the nutrients and within a week you will start to feel really really bad and then and unless something is done like people like plenty of people died out of rabbit poisoning so it's good it's really really nice it's not a food that you can eat on its own that said it's the best meat for threonine it helps with good sleep protects from infection via the mucus so it goes easily into low a tier Final one, lamb. So on lamb, we need to consider the calories, which are 204, which is higher than most, with fat 9.2 and cholesterol 151, 151 milligrams, the worst one that we have seen today, with protein 28, which is also pretty good. Now, protein to fat ratio, 3.1, which is okay, good amino acid profile, all the essential amino acids are there, and it's one of the highest one in alanine, very good important amino acid for energy production because it helps your body get the energy from glucose, essentially sugar. But it's also the highest one of all of them is something called phenylalanine, okay? And phenylalanine is the amino acid that goes wrong in people when they have a condition called PKU or phenylketonuria. And obviously every type of meat can be dangerous for, with phenylketonuria, but like lamb is the worst of them all because it's very high in phenylalanine. So where are we going to put this? So it does have an average protein to fat ratio. It does have all of the essential amino acid, but not an impressive profile. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's like halfway, midway. It's like, you remember when I was discussing peaches in the fruitier list, that's exactly the same thing. But it does come with higher cholesterol. It does have great alanine, but it's also the worst one with phenylalanine and people with phenylketonuria. I don't think I can put it higher than C tier. That could be the case, these being better than good, but I think they are on the same on the same level. Now, let's go to the final verdict and the final part of the tier list. So, who's the winner? Now, this time here, this is the first time we have a clear winner in venison or deer. Now, let me be very clear. Most meats scored decently, but this time the winner is clear. There is no tie in here. So its profile is just better in most areas than anything else. So venison proceeds to the Champions League and is going to fight other foods that they did pass round one. Now, let me close on uh, explaining to you about meat. So meats per se, they come with complete proteins and usually when taken um, as a lean cut, they have a great balance between protein and fat and they're really good for muscle growth. In general, meats, they have very good levels of zinc, very good levels of iron, very good levels of B vitamins, very important for your energy, very important for your immune system. Now, they also come with potential risk, which is higher cholesterol and higher saturated fats compared to plant-based food. Now, how dangerous is this? 
to be fair, after 15 years as a nutrition professional, no one really knows, okay? So this is something it's worth you looking into that because it may be something that you may decide whether to do it or not. I leave that up to you. Now, red meats in general, they have been linked though to several pa- in several papers. So there is a lot of evidence, scientific evidence. They can increase the chances of the big C. I'm not going to say the name, not, not to be demonetized, but you know, this is one of the worst like health conditions that you can think of, especially the, um, the big C of the colon. Does it mean that if you eat red meat, you're going to get it? No, it doesn't mean anything. It means that it's something that you need to remember because the, the, the evidence is fairly important. And also, and this is something I would strongly suggest you to look up and, and find out more about that. The meat industry has a large and strong impact on the environment. Just Google this. You're going to find way like better places to discuss this than, uh, than my video. But this is something worth um, looking up and understanding more. Now, if you have liked this video here, there is going to be the next tier list on here. Or if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do it like here. And please comment down below what food or nutrition tier list would you would like to see next and i will make sure to help you with that for now have a great day and bye bye ciao ciao